Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you guys could subscribe here, it would mean a lot to me if, if you guys could subscribe to the Tobin and Leroy show on any podcast platform. If you guys are viewers, you guys can watch on the WQAM YouTube page, Miami 560 WQAM. Check that out. So yesterday, interesting day in the AFC East. Of course, Stephon Diggs was traded to the Houston Texans who are loading up. They're going to use that pot of gold that the, uh, that the rookie quarterback contract gives them. And they decide to go and trade for digs after a lot of drama, uh, you know, a successful statistical run with the Buffalo bills also seemed like there was uh, a lot of finger pointing at him. Anytime things went wrong for the Buffalo bills. So you, you saw what happened. The frostiness that was there between Stephon Diggs, the fan base. I don't think it was directly with Josh Allen. That seemed like it was more like last year. Uh, I remember when he was told to leave the facility, all that type of stuff. And now he gets to move on to uh, one of the highly touted rookie prospects. And you do wonder, what does this mean for Buffalo? Everybody was talking about when the Miami Dolphins did not bring back Christian Wilkins and let go a lot of their older, more banged-up defenders were the Miami Dolphins heading for a reset season. But the Miami Dolphins have taken up one of the Bills' starters. The Bills, are they the ones that are actually headed for the reset season? Now, I don't think, you know, this is going to be one where those teams are going to be cast out because they have Josh Allen. Everybody thinks the world of him. Um, Odds-wise, expectation-wise, the Miami Dolphins will likely still have to get over the hump of Buffalo. You cannot go into any season and think to yourself, oh, we got this person because honestly, my thought process of it, if you weren't going to get them last year, then when can you feel comfortable that you'll get them? You have to go prove it. Last year was all set up for the Miami Dolphins. They had the, the division in hand and they still fumbled it at the end. And so while this is going to be an interesting thing to see how Josh Allen lives without his favorite toy and his best receiver, you could also wonder, like, if you saw last year for the Buffalo Bills, the way that after Ken Dorsey got let go, even though I felt like he was the scapegoat, you know, they went to more of a run game. They went more with James Cook. He's still there for them. Is this going to be a, a situation, like, similar to Baltimore where, you know, they, they become more of a, a run-oriented team and maybe they get some stud young rookie wide receiver, you know, much like uh, the Baltimore Ravens did with Zay Flowers last year. I'm not ready to to throw dirt on the Buffalo Bills because of this, but it is still hilarious. Like you had their star receiver very much publicly telling you all, I am a big reason why Josh Allen is who he is. Not to say another receiver couldn't do that, but it was funny that everybody seemed to always just look like Stephon Diggs was some kind of ingrate. And I really don't remember a quarterback who was held in the regard of a Josh Allen and the quarter and the and the receiver very much didn't seem like he dug that, and it's just it was an interesting it was an interesting dynamic to to check out, and I'm very curious because you know I was bringing this up on the show yesterday when the news broke, and I was like the last time I remember something like that, typically it surrounded To, usually I mean the famous one with him was well we really did it with every quarterback did it with Jeff Garcia did it with. Donovan McNabb's probably like the most success that team team got to a Super Bowl. He played on a broken leg. And he never really he's like, I am the reason Donovan McNabb is this good. And he was probably right. But everybody was like, ah, oh, we got we have high regard for Donovan McNabb and the Eagles and Andy Reid. So it was always that T.O. was the bad guy. The thing that's gonna be interesting, if they are gonna go with this like very careful more responsible method for a whole season with Josh Allen. Can he be the quarterback that does that is going to be the thing you got to keep an eye out on. But look, man, he gets out of the division as it stands right now. You lose talent like the Bills have been. Yeah, it's still a good day at Dolphins land. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and act like what happened wasn't fantastic and they didn't enjoy the holy hell out of it. Um, But now you got to, you know, you got to see with the Miami Dolphins, like what is... You know, do they have any other plans? And this draft is going to be huge. I mean, I think we all look at this and just be like, all right, the Patriots, they're probably going to get a new face of the franchise with a new quarterback. The Dolphins 
I mean, you, who knows where they're going to go? Probably in the trenches. It's probably the responsible thing to do. But look, what if some stud drops to Mike McDaniel? He's never had a first round pick. Is it crazy to think that he's like looking at this and be like, just something else to 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 add to the arsenal, something else to to tinker with with this offense? And then crazy to think that the Miami Dolphins, if if one of these receivers were to drop to them or there was some value that would be crazy to think they go in that direction just to have a couple of insurance policies. We're seeing around the league the the paying the two receivers is not usually the way to go. He's the younger guy, but he's not the better guy. The better guy is is Tyreek Hill. I wrongly said I thought Jalen Waddle could outperform Tyreek Hill last year. I was that high on Jalen Waddle. And I think this year he's got some more to prove. Even though last year was a nice year, I think we can all admit there weren't as many whoa games from Waddle as there needs to be. So the Dolphins looking at that is about now it's probably again not the responsible thing to do. It's probably more likely line defensive line is probably the way you should go if you can get the best interior D lineman because they really haven't seemed like they've fixed that hole with something that you're just like really really confident the offensive line everybody goes offensive line I am in this spot where I'm like look if they don't go offensive line I do think the Dolphins have kind of covered their bases I think they're okay at offensive line should they not take somebody at 21 if they find somebody later they find the second rounder hell I'm all for it but I think the Dolphins are okay. And especially yesterday you get the news of Kendall Lamb. So you have your very much needed Teron Armstead insurance policy. Kendall Lamb played very, very nice minutes for the Dolphins. Uh, very, very nice games for the Dolphins last year. Got a did, did a very good job. And you know, seems like a decent dude. Says this is his last ride. He wants to throw into this. It's kind of an interesting thing with him because it feels like this could be almost like a last ride for this core if they do not do the serious winning that they need to do. And that's at bare minimum, break the slump. And, you know, I think reasonably, if they could show that they can actually be a contender this year, you know, maybe those expectations change. I foolishly had them way too high last year because I thought this was going in a great direction. Now, Got I got, you know, I got myself uh, protected a little bit. I still think they can win the division. Don't get me wrong. But it does it does get to a point where you need to show that you can win the division. So as far as that other receiver spot with Waddle and Tyreek, do you get to this spot where, all right, you see somebody young that you like, or will the Dolphins go in a veteran spot? There's been some reports about Tyler Boyd. We know about the Odell Beckham thing. Um, but I do think the Dolphins are going to look for that spot pretty much on the cheap skis. And I don't know how many more sweet-talking deals the Dolphins can find. How many Jordan Poyers are out there that they could find. I know Drew Rosenhaus was out there saying, like, hey, my, you know, my guys will take for less. I get it. It's beautiful down here. This is an organization that has done right by the players and the report card that people do want to play down here. Um, but you need a lot of things to go awry for that to happen. You're kind of fingers crossed on a, on a lot of those spots. So we'll see. But yesterday in the AFC East, yeah, losing one of the most talented, your your rival losing one of their most talented players is, you know, top, what, three, four, five player on their team for their last couple of years, a top two player on their team. You know, it's for sure. It, 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 sh- it should be a, a good day for the Dolphins. But... It's not like celebration time. The Dolphins still have their own business to take care of. I don't always like doing the, oh, well, if this was Tua narrative on anybody else. But I do think this was, look, if Tua were to lose Tyreek Hill, people would be so rats off a shit about Tua thinking that he couldn't make up for it. He couldn't figure out how to use any of his other wide receivers. Josh Allen's an interesting one, man. Like, we haven't seen him be good without Stephon Diggs, really. Stephon Diggs is putting it out there that I'm a big reason why he's as successful. We've seen now Justin Herbert's going to go. No receiver core. A little bit of a different situation. They very much seem like they're in full rebound, rebuild mode with Harbaugh, who, by the way, just seems, I mean, very, very wacky with his first day of meetings antics. Um, but then, you know, you see, you know, people see, oh, Mahomes did it without anybody, you know, Rasheed Rice, Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey getting long in the tooth and a rookie receiver. 
man, not every first of all, it was like the number one story in the NFL all year was what a eyesore it was to watch the Chiefs wheeze through the season. Now look, pedigree, heart of a champion that they got it done and had an amazing defense. Hey, props to them. But it doesn't change the fact that offensively it was a struggle for them and that you've already seen the the Bills wipe away a lot of their defense. They do not have last year's Chiefs defense. So to think that right now as it stands, they have enough raise an eyebrow at it. I don't want to say right now the Miami Dolphins vault themselves because that just feels like a disaster to say something like that. And I'm uh, and they already broke that trust last year because it felt very much like oh this is this is a cakewalk. But it's hard not to look at yesterday and say it was the, it it was not a good day for your Miami Dolphins.